Yes, hi everybody. Uh, this is a quick video to answer a question from Amy. Um, Amy lives somewhere where there is, uh, from the sounds of it, local distribution lines near the property. That's clearly visible. She's trying to sell the property, uh, but these things are a bit of an eyesore and uh, people are, buyers are worried about it. Um, so the question is, um, she says, I've had it professionally assessed. Um, as in, I know what levels these things are putting out and, um, you know, can I sue the council over these things? Well, the problem, of course, is that the exposure, which in uh, Amy's case was about 1.7, 1.8 milligauss, uh, which, of course, in our opinion, is uh, too high uh, because it, you know, it teeters on 2 milligauss where melatonin is affected in its natural anti-cancer action. 1.6 milligauss doubles the chance of sperm abnormalities and in studies with kids with leukemia levels down to 1 milligauss um, seem to affect the children's mortality rate as in you know their health uh, their immune system probably so much affected that you know it had this sad turn of events in terms of their recovery um, so for that reason you know we want those levels far lower you know, one is basically where the trouble starts. And so for a place to live, you're looking for 0 0.3 uh, milligauss. Ideally, it can be a little bit more, but you want to definitely stay away from that one. So what's the problem then with government? Well, the government reckons that the levels can be far higher and they're not a problem. Um, in the United States, it's a 1,000 milligauss uh, that you can be exposed to. Anything under, they're perfectly happy for you to be exposed to. So problem is, is that if you were to take anybody to court and try and take some action is that the council is just going to go well what are you worried about 1.8 beautiful reading it can be anything under a thousand milligauss for you know residential exposure um, so your problem is that you wouldn't really need to take the council to court you would need to take the exposure standards to court as in those organizations and, and government bodies responsible for setting the standards. And that's the battle we've been fighting for years now and there's just, yeah, just very little chance. Um, so, yeah, bit of a tough one, not much to do. Um, I'm, I'm guessing these lines were there when you bought the property, uh, which just goes to show, show that, you know, you should always measure this um, with a decent quality gauss meter before committing to any property. Uh, now, magnetic fields are caused by current, the usage of electricity, and that does increase. So, you know, buying a property 10 years ago and, and now measuring, there could be a difference because there's a lot more houses around or more appliances being used. Um, so they can all play a role. So, yeah, not quite sure uh, if, uh, if this is any good news for you. I, I guess not. I guess you just have to wait for somebody to buy who, you know, doesn't pay attention to it, I guess, um, which is... Yeah, it's not a nice situation to be in. You know, you don't want to pass it on to other people, but, you know, it was also passed on to you. It's a tough one. Um, so, but, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know the, the situation, don't know the picture. Um, if anybody else is in a similar boat, um, you know, a decent quality Gauss meter uh, gives you some answer, but take readings throughout the day because they vary. They're typically lower at night, higher in the afternoon um, there's various you know reasonable good amateur meters around uh, I personally have a fair bit of experience with the TF2s uh, I even have a, an online course uh, which you can find at healthstronghold.teachable.com um, you learn a lot about EMFs and how to use that meter specifically and there's also other amateur meters popular amateur meters that you'll see there as well so anyway hope this uh, helped or at least uh, gives you a bit of an idea of where you uh, where you may be standing